An inmate at the Virginia Department of Corrections, Red Onion State Prison. To accept this call, press zero. This is Randall Vaughn. I'm currently serving 1,214 years for capital murder in Red Onion State Prison. Welcome to my podcast, Red Onion Randy. I hope you enjoy listening to me today. I got a uh, an email on my website, uh, redonionrandy.com, from a guy calling himself Tuco, which uh, if there's any Breaking Bad fans out there listening to this, you know that he was the character on on the show. I'm pretty sure, uh, Tuco, you should have picked a better uh, a better nickname, as the fact that you were in the process of being indicted and charged for distribution in the state of Virginia. One of the things that he wrote to me and asked me about was, he's 47 years old, and he's only 140 pounds, you know, small guy, and uh, he wants to know what's in store for him. You know, he wants some, uh, some insight and everything into uh, how to survive in prison. Is he going to be picked on? Is he, is he, you know, going to be tested? You know, is he going to have to fight? Um, those types of things. And the answer to that question is, uh, yes, you are. You know, it's. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone coming to prison that didn't get into it at least one fight. I, I, maybe. I don't know, but I seriously, seriously doubt it. Prison is a pressure cooker, especially emotionally. Basically, Tuco, take a, take the worst day in your life, man, and then times that by 10,000, and then times that again by another 1,000. And that's pretty much a good day in prison for you because there's just, there's just so much stress. So my advice is this. Obviously, if you're listening to my podcast, you're out on bail. So, dude... Talk to your lawyers, man. Make the best deal possible. You're going to have to do time. That, that's just all there is to it. But the good thing for you is this. From your email, it sounded like everything that you're being charged for is a nonviolent offense. Um, so that means starting January the 1st of 2020, you will go from 85% down to 65% of your time, meaning you're not going to have to do 85% of it. You'll only wind up doing 65% of it if you can stay out of as much trouble as possible. Now, charges only really hurt you near the end of your bid, not the front of your bid, but the thing is this, man. You don't want to catch charges, if at all possible. And it's so easy to get in that mindset, man, I'm going to spend the rest of my life in prison. Or, I don't give a, man, I don't care about this. I don't care about that. Dude, don't come into prison with that attitude because that attitude breaks dudes down in here. It institutionalizes guys, and you don't never want to be institutionalized because the day you become institutionalized is the day you're no good to nobody and the system wins. Always fight the system. Not only that, dude, man, excuse me, dust in the air. Um, this is the thing, dude, why you don't never want to become institutionalized, because there's always hope. Laws are always changing. So when you come into the system, man, do your absolute best to come into the system with some money on your books, because prison is a messed up place. But don't spend it all on food simply because make this time count for you. Get into the law library. Take money and buy the Blackstone paralegal course. That will teach you. Believe me, let me tell you something. If I had the money to buy that, without hesitation, without question, I would order it right this set. That's how important it is, man. Do your best to come into prison with some money, man. That way, you know, one, you're not too much of a financial burden on your family. Because you live out there, dude. You know how expensive it is. And you know every day goes by, man, it seems like it just gets more and more expensive. So do the things now while you're on the street waiting to go to trial to prepare yourself for this place. Go back, man, and listen to all of my podcasts over and over again. 
take notes on stuff, man. Make a list of things you need to do. Start working out. Working out is one of the greatest things you can do for your mental health and your emotional health in prison because it is such an incredible stress reliever. Not only that, when guys in here see dudes who work out religiously, meaning they working out at least five to six days every single week and they don't miss workouts, and they can go and they keep going and going and going, dude, they tend to leave you the hell alone because they know if they do pick a fight with you, they're in for a fight because you're in shape, especially if you have cardio. Because this is the thing about fights. A, a normal fight only lasts around 30 seconds because most guys don't have the endurance to go longer than that. So if they can't knock you out in the first 30 seconds, it's their ass and they know it. That's why dudes in here don't mess with me anymore because I show my cardio. And I'm telling straight up, look, dude, I, I got a freaking steel jaw. I've never been knocked out. In all the fights I've ever been in, I've never been knocked out. I've been rocked a couple of times, but the fact of the matter is I've never been knocked out. So if you can't get me in that first 30 seconds, I'm going to beat the breaks off of you. And that's the way most guys in prison are. So just simply by showing dudes that you work out and you working out on a weekly, daily basis, rain, snow, or shine, it don't matter, it tends to alleviate a lot of problems that you got to deal with. Learn to read, man. Fall in love with reading. Because this is the thing about television. Yeah, it's good to have one. I have one. But because you only get 15 television stations in the state of Virginia, you wind up watching the same thing over and over and over and over again. You know, it's like we get TNT. My nickname for TNT is Till Next Time. We get USA. USA stands for You'll See It Again. You know, you, you, you can't, I, me, I can't watch the same stuff over and over again. You know, so learn to read, man. Enjoy it. Love it. You have to do things that will occupy your mind, that will occupy your time. Because if you don't, prison is going to break you. Get an education when you come in here. They just started a, a new program called uh, FAFSA, F-A-F-S-A, I think it's FAFSA. But uh, I'm in the process of trying to uh, see what's going on. I'm hoping for a pardon from the governor, uh, Ralph Norton, before he leaves office. But uh, if he doesn't grant me that, then I'm going to I'm going to really, really get into uh, this because now the government will pay for your college education. And the fact, you know, I have a GED, that means I, I qualify and I'm eligible for the government, you know, for the uh, – Department of Education to pay for me to go to college, you know, which is something I definitely want to do and I'm interested in doing. You have to find these things like this, man, that that help you. Go online. And I, I'm sure there's been a bunch of guys on YouTube that's gotten out of prison that films themselves teaching how to make them a stinger. Learn how to do that, man, and actually make a couple while you're out there on the street so you know how to do it. Because, one, that's a good hustle in prison because we don't get hot water in the sink. I mean, it's crap. Learn how to do those little things, man. Learn how to sew. Learn how to, to man, to draw. You know, just do whatever, man. You know, do little arts and crafts. Uh, how to make necklaces and, and, and stuff like that because – there's so much stuff in here, man, that, you know, dudes will just buy. If you know how to do something, dudes will buy it all the time, especially a lot of the gang members. A lot of stuff for them is about status, and that's the one thing you're going to have to deal with when you come to prison, man. Unfortunately, man, the state of Virginia is, uh, is really, really starting to gang up. You know, you, you got your typical Crips and Bloods. You got Gangster Disciples. You know, you got... 
MS-13, Latin Kings, but, man, there's just freaking so many gangs in here now, dude. I, I mean, it's – you can't roll over a damn rock, man, without finding three or four gangs. You got to deal with it, man, and understand something, dude. If you can, stay away from them as much as possible because you don't get a fair fight with them. If you fight one of them, you're going to have to fight the rest of them in the damn pod. That's just the way it is, man. That's just the way they carry themselves. But at the same time, man, don't roll over for nobody. It's better to fight and take an ass whooping than it is to roll over and be a bitch. Because you don't ever want that name of being a bitch in prison. Because once you show weakness in here, dude, it's blood in a water full of great whites. They'll just start circling and circling and circling until one of them takes a bite out of you. If you have to, man, just go down swinging down. Look, that advice you always hear, you know, especially on television and movies and whatnot, man, go in there and find the biggest dude in there and just clock him upside his jaw. I would not recommend that at all. <laughs> big dudes are big for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Me, I could probably get away with that, truth be told, because I know how to fight big dudes. Hell, I've never fought somebody my size or smaller than me. I'll always fight big dudes. But I have years and years and years of experience and quite a few ass whoopings behind me that has taught me how to do that. Be respectful, man. Be quiet. Don't hang out with a whole lot of people, man. Because remember something in here, dude. You don't really have true, genuine friends in here. I mean, it, I'm not saying it's, it's not possible. You know, hell, me and my buddy Frank, man, we're real, real tight. You know, I honestly, I job consider the dude family almost. But, man, that is very, very rare. And the fact that you're new in prison, especially if you do have some money. Look, another thing about having money in prison, dude, one, don't let people know. It's nobody's damn business. And when you go to the store, look, your first couple of weeks, buy what you need for that week and maybe get a little bit extra just to stock up. But this is the thing. Understand something about these gangs. If they see you going to the store every week and you're coming back, with fifty, sixty, seventy, hundred dollars worth of stuff every single week, guess what's going to happen? Yep, five or six of them are going to roll up on you. Two of them's going to have a knife, and you either going to have to come up off your commissary, or you're going to have to fight for it. So, don't even put yourself in that position. Now, yeah, you might have heart. I don't know you do. I don't know if you're willing to fight or or whatever. But the fact of the matter is this. Do everything in your power not to put yourself in that position. And that goes back to my first piece of advice to you, man. Talk to your lawyers and get them to make the best deal possible for you. Like If you know you're going to be convicted, if you know you're going to be convicted, if you know the evidence they have against you is stacked against you and there's really nothing you can do about it, then get them to make the best deal because, look, all right, let's face it, man. Let's say you do, uh, you're do, forty, you 47 years old. Let's say if you can get a deal for 20 years. Well, 50% of 20 years is 10 years. Add another 5% to that, you only wind up doing around 13 or so, and you can get out. And this is the thing. Laws are subject to change even between now and then. You know, there's always ways of getting out. Not only that, dude, I mean, get a post-conviction lawyer after you're found guilty. Have them go through it with a fine tooth and comb. There's organizations out there like the uh, National Legal Professional Association, the NLPA. They're a group of people that uh retired lawyers and judges and FBI agents and Hell, I think they even got a couple ex-CIA agents that work for them. They grew up working for the system and seeing how messed up the system is. And now that they're retired, they kind of like, you know what, man, a lot of that crap we did was wrong. So let me try to make up for that and give back a little bit and help some of these guys, man, that are being just completely screwed. Reach out to them. It's nothing but $3,000. You know what I'm saying? And let's face it, dude, if they're charging you for distribution – you should have $3,000 to pay them, man, to help you out. That's my best advice, man. Do whatever you can, man, to, to hopefully make a plea deal where you don't have to do a whole lot of time. And the fact that it is the distribution, dude, you shouldn't have to spend the rest of your life in prison for that. 
I mean, honestly, if, if your lawyers are any good, what you do is this, man. Have your lawyers start filing postponement after postponement after postponement to drag it out. One, that allows you to stay out of prison longer, and that allows you, dude, I mean, seriously, man, go online and, and order DVDs or something on learn how to box because, you know, boxing is real simple and it's real easy to learn. And start practicing that day in and day out. Start working out, man. Put muscle on, dude. You got time. You got protein. You got weight powder. You got weights and access to that stuff. Do what you can to get yourself as strong as you can before you even set foot in the courtroom for your trial. There's all these things you can do. And just, look, don't pay attention to the prison stuff you see on movies and the stuff you see in, in television and whatnot. Dude, that stuff is fake, man. It's Hollywood. It ain't nothing like what it is in here for real. First of all, it's a hell of a lot more dangerous in here than, than television even portrays it. But it's not dangerous in the way that they portray it. I really, I really don't know how to explain it, man. It's comprehending something and understanding something is two entirely different worlds. So, but you have to prepare yourself. You have to listen to podcasts, man. Watch documentaries on prison. And just learn as much as you can, man. Take notes. Read, uh, read biographies of people who've actually been in prison. You have one minute remaining. I feel for you, bro. I mean, I really do, man, because I already know what's going through your mind. You're sitting there thinking to yourself, man, sh no amount of money is worth this. Because you are stressed the hell out right now. If you're reaching out to me to ask for advice, you are stressing the F out. And it's not worth it, man. So do something with that, man. Do something with it. Don't don't let these people beat you. Make whatever deals you got to make, man. And just never give up hope, man. Always fight. Always fight for yourself. This is Red Onion Randy. I hope you enjoyed listening to me. Tuco, I hope I helped you, man. For those of you who listen to me on Apple Podcasts, I would appreciate if you would review me and rate me, preferably five stars, but I'll take whatever you think I'm worth. Take care. Stay safe. Thank you for using GTL.